So now we will talk about the studying of metal complexes using um, IR spectroscopy. Now, basically, a metal complex can, um, like I said, in, in this case, involves um, organic ligands. So IR spectroscopy is better compared to UV um, visible spectroscopy in the sense that IR help us to be more detailed. It gives us more detailed information about our complex as regard the bonding between the metal and even the um, organic ligand. So it help us, it gives us much more information compared to the UV. So in most cases for complexes that involve organic ligands, um, hydrazone compounds are usually used as compounds. And the reason why hydrazone compounds are used is because they have the hydrazone compounds usually have um, atoms carrying lone pairs of electrons that can be used um, to coordinate with the metal um, atom. And that's why you always have hydrazone compounds being used as organic ligands in as organic ligands that coordinate with a metal. Based on the type of organic ligand used, we can have an heteroleptic metal complex and we can also have an homoleptic um, metal complex. An heteroleptic um, metal complex implies that we are having two different organic ligands being coordinated with a metal atom but when you're having the same the same organic molecule coordinated to a metal atom then you can say you have an homoleptic uh, metal complex so like i said earlier in most cases an hydrazone compound are usually used in metal complexes as um, the organic ligand. An example of that is this. This molecule that we have here is formed is an hydrazone. That is, it's involved in reaction between carbonyl and a, another, another, comp, another compound carrying an amino group. So the amino group of this particular part of the molecule reacted with the carbonyl of this one. So the carbonyl here and this part reacted and they form an hydrazone. And that's what we have in this particular case. So, but if you look at this particular complex now, you will see that it contains some atoms. For example, this carbonyl um, functional group with oxygen that carries two lone pairs. This is also a nitrogen that carries lone pairs. So, the point there is that this um, ligand, this organic molecule, carries atoms that carries lone pair, which can carries atom that has lumpia that can be donated into the metal D orbital. So, because any molecule you are going, any molecule that is to be coordinated to a center meta, to the central metal in a metal complex should carry a lumpia. So, this particular part of this molecule here, another zone, carries um, oxygen. As an as an oxygen that carries two lone pair, there is also this. So this can be this can serve as an organic ligand that can be coordinated to a metal. This is another example of a, of an, you know, this is another example of a ligand that of an organic ligand that can also be coordinated to to this particular metal. Probably in this case copper. Now and this is bipyridine, and um, this bipyridine, you know, there is a there is a nitrogen here that carries a lone pair. There's also a nitrogen here that carries a lone pair. And these two nitrogen can be used, can serve as atoms that coordinate with the central metal. So if I use this ligand and this ligand to co like coordinating them to this um, central, to this copper atom would give me an heteroleptic um, um, metal complex. So but if you are using the same ligand, you can have an homoleptic metal complex. Now, in the higher study, um, in the use of higher spectroscopy to study um, metal complexes, 
we need to do a kind of comparative study whereby you look at the IR spectrum of the ligand when it has not been coordinated to the meta. At the same time, you compare it to the um, to the IR spectrum of the meta complex when the uh, what's it called when reaction when you as when reaction has already taken place and um, when you have already carried out reaction that will lead to the formation of your complex so the use of higher spectro spectroscopy to study meta complex in form a form of comparison of the higher spectrum of the ligand before the reaction to form a complex and also the um, the higher spectrum of the ligand after the reaction to form the complex. So when you compare the higher spectrum before reaction to form complex and after reaction to form complex, you can determine whether the, uh, the organic ligand, the organic ligand that you have, have truly been coordinated with the given metal. So when you carry out reactions and you compare the the higher spectrum before reaction and after reaction, you can use the, the information from the higher spectrum to determine whether coordination has truly occurred or not. Now, uh, in, the compar in the comparison of higher spectrum of the, of, the com of the ligand before reaction to form the complex, and after the reaction, after you have done the reaction, there are some specific um, bonds that you can always look out for, which can give you an idea of what has taken place, whether um, coordination has truly occurred between the metal and the, and the organic ligand or not. And so, because if the metal coordinates with the organic ligand, there will be some changes in some of these words of this particular um, functional group, or let me say bonds. There will be some changes to the to the vibrational frequency of some of these particular bonds. So, but at the same time, it also depends on the kind of ligand that is given to you. But in this case, I'm just using this particular hydrazone as an example and this bipyridine as an example for us to consider as organic ligand that can be coordinated to this copper to this copper um, to this copper meta as the central as the central meta atom so in this our ligand that we have here we have different um, bonds within it and one of them is this c double bond o bond we have c Okay, we have C double bond O bond, we have C double bond N bond, we also have NH bond, we also have, um, yes, in some cases also you can also have an OH bond being, being part of the ligand, or you might not even have it even being part of the ligand, but after formation of, um, after formation of the, of the complex, OH signal, OH, um, fibration of OH signal might also occur. You can also consider NH, like I said, and can consider what N to N bond. So what we're trying to say there is that before the fibrational frequency of each of these bonds, before and after um, coordination has taken place, will be different. And you can explore, you can use those differences to determine whether coordination has taken place between the ligand and the and what's it called between the ligand and the metal. At the same time, you can also use that to determine where coordination has taken place. If you study, if you do a, a comparison between the IR spectrum before the reaction and after the reaction very well, you can easily know how the meta has been coordinated or how the ligand has been coordinated to the meta. So, like I said, some of the signals you can always check out for as, as probably using this particular hydrazone as an example of an organic ligand is I can look out for the C double bond N, N um, um, bond signal. I can look out for C double bond N signal, which is around 1600. There's a change with this C double bond N signal, vibrational frequency. That means I, well, I might assume that probably this particular N 
that is at this point has been coordinated with has been used to has been coordinated to the what to the copper to the central metal atom and that's why i have a change like if i look at the cn signal before um, before reaction to form the complex and after the reaction to form the complex if there is difference i could say something has to certainly happen to or to this end that we have in this particular point so you will expect that you are given to ir spectrum one for the ligand when it has not been coordinated when coordination when the coordination reaction has not taken place at the same time one after the coordination has taken place so you can also look out for this c double bond o bond because your ligand has c double bond o so if the c double bond o has been coordinated to the metal there will be a change in the vibrational frequency which is around 1637 also you can also look out for o it like i said in some cases but not particularly in this case but also in some cases after reaction for coordination has taken place or a signal might also appear in the meta complex due to some other um, reasons probably from the solvent or any other thing like that so you can also look out for the oh signal in the ir spectrum before and after reaction for coordination and i said and here now we have that the signal is for oh is always around 3400 around 35 now for the nh you can also look out for the nh the NH is usually around 3,200, 3,000 to 3,001. So you can look out for the NH signal before in the in the ligand before reaction takes place and after the reaction for coordination after. So when you compare, if you look out for this 3,002 signal, and let for example, probably before reaction you have NH signal in the spectrum for the ligand before the reaction. And after the reaction has taken place and you are looking at your complex and you see that this NH signal is no longer there, that might imply that something has happened to this H, to that word that is attached to this word, to this N. I will talk about that later because in some, in some um, ligand, deprotonation might occur. And that's why I said the kind of ligand given to you is a very key thing to take note of. But I'm just using, like I said, this idea zone as an example of organic ligand that can be coordinated with a metal um, ion as atom, as copper that we have in this particular case. Now, you can also look out for this end to end bond and look at change. So the point there is that if coordination has truly occurred, there will be change to, or to the vibrational frequency of each of these particular bonds compared to what you have before coordination occur. So when you do a comparison between the higher spectrum of this ligand without coordination and the high house spectra and the higher spectra of this ligand after coordination, there will be changes in all of this. So you can you can use this the changes that occurs to the vibrational frequency of each of these bond to describe what as to describe your complex at the same time to determine to describe what has happened between the, the ligand at the same time the meta and that's the reason for this so you have to do a comparison a comparison between the higher spectrum of the ligand without coordination and higher spectrum and higher of the ligand after coordination reaction as occurred So you have to look out, you have to read the spectrum wheel and look out for each of these things and look at the variation that occurs before reaction for coordination and after reaction for coordination and use that to, um, to explain and to describe the kind of thing that has happened between the meta and the organic ligand. You, can, you also have to consider, if for in case if you're having an, ether, um, an heteroleptic um, meta complex, so you also have to look at the second organic ligand that you have at the same time look at what could have what what could have changed because the kind of c double bond n c um, bond you are going to have in this ligand might be different from the kind of c double bond n you are going to have in this ligand 
So and at the same time, if the seed, if the N here as if the nitrogen atom here and the nitrogen atom here is coordinated to what to this particular metal, the vibrational frequency of the seed of bond N bond here would change, would be affected. And those are things that we that they expect that you look out for in the higher spectrum of the ligand compared to, um, before coordination of chords, before coordination of chords, and after coordination has occurred. Now, another, another, another important um, signals that you can also look out for is the metal to oxygen and metal to nitrogen um, signal. And the vibrational frequency for these two um, bonds is usually found at the far end of the IR spectra. That is in the fingerprint region, and most time, one will expect that now this M two O implies metal to oxygen, and this M two N implies metal to nitrogen. Because if I look at this, my if I look at this, um, if you call, if you look at this particular, um, if you look at this particular um, ligand that we have here, you will see that the only atoms that carries um, lone pair that can be donated into the d orbital into the d orbital of the metal is oxygen and nitrogen so in this place one will expect that if coordination has occurred there should be a metal to oxygen and um, bond formation after coordination there should also be a, there should also be a metal to nitrogen um signal in the ir spectrum after coordination has occurred so and that is the reason why you can also look out for these two signals in the given higher spectra. So you look, so we expect that M to O, metal to oxygen um, bond or signal, should be absent in the higher spectrum before coordination reaction occurs. At the same time, metal to oxygen bond should be present should be present in the spectrum that you got after coordination has happened. If truly, if truly coordination has occurred between the ligand and the metal, there will be M to O and M to N signal in the spectra that you have after coordination reaction has taken place. But these two, the signal for them would be absent in the spectra that. Uh, you got before the coordination reaction to take place. So normally, you can always look at the far end of your. You can always look at the far end, or at the. You can always look towards the end of the IR spectrum in the fingerprint as region, and look for signal that appears in the spectrum that you have after coordination, but do not appear in the spectrum before coordination to get a signal for this M metal to oxygen and metal to nitrogen. So usually they are usually the signal for these two are usually around let's say six around seven hundred to let's say four hundred. That's where you see signal for the metal to oxygen and metal to nitrogen. So you can always look for signal that are present after coordination but they are absent but they are absent in the spectrum before coordination reaction taking place in order to get the signal for metal to oxygen and metal to nitrogen. And that is how to use an higher spectrum in the study of metal complexes. So you have to do a comparison. So you have like two spectra, one for the ligand before coordination reaction taking place and the other, the second one will be for the complex. That is when the uh, when coordination has occurred between the ligand and the central metal. So when you do a comparison study of some of this or of some of the signals for these particular um, functional groups and bonds, so you can use that to um, describe what kind of um, uh, what kind of coordination have occurred between the ligand at the same time the metal. There are other things that could also be considered in the use of IR spectrums to describe to describe the coordination of um, of organic ligand to a metal 
atom. And, for, and one of them is what we describe as keto in tautomerism. That implies that there could always be a change, there is always a, 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 a reversible um, conversion between ketone and enos. So in a way, let's consider this um, particular um, ligand that we have here. Now, please note, it is not all ligand that can have this particular property occurring. It's not every ligand. But let's consider this particular ligand that I've given, which I said is an hydrazone. So, one of the things that can happen in this case is that this N can become, this nitrogen carrying the nitrogen, this nitrogen carrying the hydrogen here can become deprotonated, can be deprotonated, and then this hydrogen is lost. Now, if this hydrogen, if this nitrogen becomes deprotonated, then we can have a what? A shift. So we can have. So we can have this occurring, and then this coming to this place. So when this takes place. Our ligand becomes the ligand that we have here becomes uh, so in a way. So what has happened here is that the ligand has undergo um, deprotonation. So that implies that something has happened to the ligand in the coordination to the metal. In the sense that before the reaction for coordination, there will be C double bond O. But after the coordination, if the protonation occur, the this part will change from this point will change from C double bond O to C single bond O. So one will expect that in the spectra that you have after coordination, there will be a C single bond O signal in the metal complex because of the protonation that has occurred. At the same time, if you look at this initial ligand, ligand before coordination, there were, this is the only N single bond H that we have in the world, in the ligand without coordination. So if the protonation occurs, that means that by the time this ligand is now coordinated to the metal, there will no longer also be what? Be N single bond H signal. So two things will happen. The carbonyl signal that you have initially in the, in the ligand before coordination will be lost, will be absent after coordination. The end single bond H that you have before coordination will also be absent after coordination due to this ketone in tautomerism. But like I said, it's not all ligand that undergoes this. But for um, for hydrazones under certain conditions, this um, ketone in non-tautomerism can occur, and that will also be brings a difference between um, the higher spectrum of the ligand before coordination and after coordination. So let's take note of that. Another thing that can also that we also have to take note is um, ligands that carries carboxylate ions. For ligands that carries carboxylate ions. Carboxylate ion that is C double bond, that is C double bond O, and we have O minus. That's carboxylate ion. A carboxylate ion as a ligand now can either be can either works as a bi can either be bidendate and it can also be monodendate in the sense that it can coordinate with the metal with the two oxygen and it can also coordinate with the metal with only one of the oxygen. So if it is just one of the oxygen, that is unidendate. But if it is, um, if it is um, with the two oxygen, it is a bidendate. So and the signal for this um, carboxylate ion, if it is involved, if, it, if you have carboxylate ion in your ligand and you are sure that it will be involved in coordination with the meta. So the signal for this, um, for um, your COO, which is carboxylate ion, is always around, um, is always around 1,5 and 1,4. There will always be two signals for the carboxylate ion, which is this asymmetric signal and the symmetric signal. The asymmetric signal is always around 1,005. 
why the symmetric the sig um, the sim um, the signal for the symmetric vibration is always around 1400 now what help us to know whether this carboxylation is called is unidentate or bidentate is the difference between the vibrational frequency of the asymmetric and the what and the symmetry so if the difference for example now this is one let's say this this the vibrational frequency for asymmetric vibration is one five and um, for the symmetry is one thousand four so if the if i found the difference between these two between these two values and it is less it is about hundred that implies that i'm having a that implies i'm having a by then date um coordination that is the two oxygens are involved in coordinating with the metal but if the difference between this the vibrational frequency of the asymmetric um, vibration and the symmetric vibration is is more than 100 let's say around 200 to 300 then i'm having a uni then date um, coordination with the metal that is only one of the oxygen is involved so they can also give us a ligand that involve carboxylate um, coordination and they will ask us to make to determine uh, and they will give us a spectrum and they will ask us to determine whether the coordination of the carboxylate ion is unidentate or bidentate so the difference between the 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 vibrational frequency of the asymmetric um, vibration and that of the symmetric uh, um, vibration determines whether the carboxylate ion is um, unidentate or whether it is bidentate in terms of its coordination with the central metal. So it's also something of importance to also take note of. Another one also that we have there is this SO4 2 minus. And particularly, it's not only about SO4 2 minus. There are times that your complex might involve other um, ligands apart from this organic ligand. For example, you can imagine having something like let's say S O bond O. We have um, O. We have O minus. So we have double bond O, double bond O, we have O minus, we have O minus. So, and we have, so this one is coordinated this way. There's a coordination here, there is also a coordination here, and there's a coordination here. So, the coordination with, coordination with the central metal, so even when you have organic ligand, might also inform inorganic ligand. And sometimes it can be SO, it can be your tetra also sulfate six um, ion that will be involved. It can also involve other other ions as bromine, um, chlorine, um, and and other ions as like that we that are other inorganic um, ions that are very common with us. But specifically for this S for SO four two minus, the vibrational frequency for when you have um, SO4 2 minus being coordinated to a complex that is involving what is it called that is involving um, organic that is also involving an organic like that is around one uh, is around 1100 okay, so you can always look for a signal around 1100 to showcase that you have SO4 2 minus um, to showcase that you have SO4 Two minus and please note all of these things are made all of this um, description in this video might not be necessary in a much practical um, scenario because um, because there are already like I said in my previous in my previous video that there are already instruments that can um, that can do all of these things automatically this is only for the purpose of um, students who are being taught courses as this and in a way to to in a way to help them to understand some of the things that they are being taught and also to be able to um, understand questions when they are given in the exam so specifically I'm talking about s 42 minus so in case you are given as an aeon that is part of the complex the signal for it is always around uh, 1100 in the ir spectrum so uh, you can always check off for that so i think this is all that we 
have to um, take notes are, are starting um, our forthcoming exam. So, so the major thing, like I said, is in using high house spectrum to um, to read to read metal complexes, you have to do a comparison. Um, a comparison between the IR the IR the IR spectrum of the um, of the of the ligand before coordination occurs and after coordination reaction has occurred.